Uh, follicular lymphoma is a cr chronic lymphoid malignancy. It's really unique because um, although it is not curable, it is treatable. Uh, the average lifespan these days is about 18 to 20 years, so any patient will require multiple treatments in their lifespan. Um, so the more active treatments we have down the line, the longer the patient's survival will be. Uh, but it's irritating disease, and the patients don't like to come back and forth, you know, even though we tell them that you know, it's not life-threatening, it's chronic disease. But you know, the anxiety and the inconvenience of coming back and forth with multiple treatments in your lifespan uh, is not ideal. So I think we should focus on improving the frontline regimens that can give you a longer progression of free survival. Even they may not cure you, but it can give you 15 years of first remission, let's say. It's better than having six or seven years of first remission, with or no maintenance, and it doesn't matter. But I think we should focus on improving the outcome of frontline regimens uh, in the next few years. Where capanlisib fits into the clinical management of patients with follicular and low-grade lymphoma remains to be defined. Its activity appears to be comparable to idelalisib. Will it supplant idelalisib? Well, if it is indeed less toxic, it might, but I think the major issue is the schedule of administration, which is three weeks in a row and then a week off. To do this indefinitely, you're going to have problems with patient compliance. It would be prudent to develop a strategy whereas you could discontinue this drug after a finite period of time. We're running into this with all the new agents, the abrutinibs, the idelalisibs, all these that are given virtually indefinitely. Patient compliance, expense become major issues. And so it would be wise to find a truncated program which would also help it in its uh, competition with the other PI3 kinases out there. There are still others we haven't talked about, such as tgr 1202s the so-called umbrilisib, which doesn't seem to have any of these adverse effects because of a differential effect on uh, Treg cells. But again, we haven't seen long-term follow-up with that drug either. So it's going to be an important time in the evaluation of these drugs. Clinical trials are critical. Close follow-up is important, and publication of the data will be important to educate physicians in the community as to where best to use them. What we have learned from the idelalisib experience is that patients who receive it early in the course of the disease, such as frontline, younger patients who have an intact immune system tend to have greater toxicity. Are we going to see that with copanlisib? I have no idea. So if one of the objects is to move a drug to the front line, then you have to be very, very careful with a drug in the same class. The goal of treatment is not to wait for patients to be refractory, not to wait for patients to relapse. It is to develop the most effective yet least toxic induction strategies. Fewer patients progress, increasing the chance we may actually be curing patients with follicular and low-grade lymphomas.